I ended the previous video trying to convince you to get started on your investment journey, even if it means you have to start with a small amount. As I mentioned, most people shy away from personal finance thinking that the math involved is super complex. But this is not true. Personal finance math is extremely simple and elementary. You only need to know a bunch of things and you can get started. Hi, my name is Karthik Rangappa and in this video, I'll talk to you about basic personal finance math. Let's start with calculating the returns. There are multiple ways to calculate the return that you've made on an investment. The most basic and fundamental technique to calculate return is called the absolute return. Consider this, you invest 50,000 in a stock, let's call it stock A, in Jan 2023. By December 2023, the investment has grown to 58,000. So what do you think is the return on this investment? Well, the calculation is fairly simple. To calculate the return, you take the difference between the ending value, which is 58,000, and the starting value, which is 50,000, and divide this difference by the starting value, which is 50,000. And the resulting number, you multiply by 100. So in this case, it is 8,000, which is the difference between the starting and the ending value, divided over 50,000, which is the initial value, multiplied by 100. When you do this math, you get 16% as the return. We call this the absolute return. When calculating the absolute return, we only consider the investment value, but we do not consider the passage of time. Now, consider another example. You invest 50,000 in stock B in Jan 2023. By March 2025, the investment grows to 60K. What do you think is the absolute return here? Well, the calculation is straightforward. You take the difference between the starting value and the ending value, divided by the starting value, multiply by 100 and you get the value. So if you do all this math, you will get the absolute return as 20%. Now, if you were to pick an investment, which stock would you choose? Would it be stock A or stock B? Well, this is a no-brainer. Based on absolute return, you would naturally pick stock B. But this is not the right approach. Whenever there is passage of time, you always have to consider time and the return over this time. This is where the second metric comes into play, which is called the Compounded Annual Growth Rate or the CAGR. To put this in perspective, assume you get a 5-inch sapling from a nursery and plant that in your house. In the first year, the plant grows to 10 inches, second year it grows to 22 inches and in the third year it grows to 45 inches. Here, the absolute growth is 40 inches over 3 years, but the rate at which it has grown is 108%. Higher the growth rate, the better it is, especially for your investments. The formula that I used here to calculate 108% is also called the CAGR formula. CAGR, like I mentioned earlier, is the growth rate. And the formula for CAGR is fairly straightforward, and here is how it looks. Ignore the CAGR formula if it looks too complex for you because most mutual funds publish the CAGR value anyway. However, it is super important that you understand what CAGR is and how to interpret the same. Now, let's go back to our initial question as to which stock is better, stock A or stock B. The starting value of stock A is 50K. The ending value of stock A is 58K. And if you plug the CAGR formula here, you'll get the CAGR value as 15.95%. Now, if you do the same thing for stock B, with the starting value as 50K and ending value as 60K, and plug in the CAGR formula, you get the CAGR as 8.78%. So now you can compare both stock A and stock B, and clearly stock A is the winner here. Let's stick to stock A for a bit. If you notice, the absolute return and the CAGR for stock A is nearly the same, that is 16%. Let's stick to stock A for a bit. If you notice, both the CAGR and the absolute return is nearly the same, that is 16%. Now this is because both CAGR and absolute return will be the same as long as the time under consideration is exactly one year. But if the time is more than one year, then it's always better to look at the CAGR value as opposed to the absolute return. Now, let's take another example. Assume that you make an investment of 25,000 on 1st of January for the next three consecutive years. 
That's basically 25,000 into 3, totaling up to 75,000. And on the 1st February of the 4th year, you decide to withdraw all the money. Let's assume 75,000 has grown to 90,000. What do you think is the return here? When you have to calculate returns for continuous investments, then you will have to calculate something called as XIRR. Think of XIRR as a close cousin of CAGR. I have discussed XIRR with examples in Varsity. I would suggest you give it a quick read. And with that, we will now move to the next important concept in personal finance, that's the time value of money. Consider this. In return of a favor that you've done, your friend offers to pay you 84,000 today or about 1 lakh in 2 years. Which option will you take? This is a tricky situation. It's less money today versus more money in 2 years from now. Selecting an option blindly based on the magnitude of money can be a disaster, especially when you're comparing money across two different timelines. To figure which is a better option, you will have to move 84,000 today to two years from now, or you'll have to bring one lakh back into today's value. Let's start with moving 84,000 two years forward. What we are about to do is called the future value of money. To do this, you need to first consider something called as the opportunity cost. Let's assume your friendly neighborhood bank offers you a rate of 9% on a fixed deposit. For sake of simplicity, let's assume fixed deposit is a safe instrument. So, if you were to receive 84,000 today, you can invest that in this opportunity, basically the fixed deposit offering you 9%. So, if you were to receive this 84,000 today from your friend and invest that in the opportunity, then in two years, you'll get 1 lakh. The math to do this is fairly straightforward, as you can see below. Note, I've approximated the numbers here for easier understanding. Now, let's try to bring 1 lakh two years from now into today's value. Bringing back the future value into today's value is called the present value of money. To calculate the present value, we need to discount the future value by the opportunity cost. The formula to calculate the present value is fairly straightforward, as you can see below. If you apply this math and bring back 1 lakh into today's value, by discounting it by the opportunity cost or the discount rate, you'll realize that 1 lakh in two years from now is as good as 84,000 today. So the offer that the friend made, that is basically 84,000 today or 1 lakh in two years from now is essentially the same and makes no difference. Let me wrap this video with a quick summary of all the things that we've learned. Personal finance is quite simple and you only need to know a handful of things to get started. Absolute return is used when you are calculating returns for one year. CAGR is a growth rate and is used when you are trying to calculate returns for more than one year. XIRR is used to calculate returns when you make regular investments across different time. Future value of money is when you project today's value into the future using the opportunity cost. Present value of money is when you want to discount the future value back into today's terms. With this in place, I guess you are now set to understand mutual funds better. Do comment and let me know if you have any queries with respect to all the math that we've learned. And in the next video, we'll dig a little deeper about mutual funds and understand the structure of an asset management company. Stay tuned.